Hello, everyone. This is Al-Fadi, and I want to welcome you to another episode of this fascinating video series that we are calling uh, uh, Holes in the Narrative, uh, Why the Standard Islamic Narrative is Sketchy. And of course, uh, I'm doing this with our dear brother Mel, who's done an awesome job researching this for us and presenting a number of topics related to, to this particular series. We've shown that uh, the biography of Muhammad is sketchy. We've shown that some of the claims that Muhammad basically banned images in his days or even statues is sketchy. And today we are going to talk about another sketchy topic. Was Al-Masjid Al-Haram or the Holy Mosque or the Holy basically court area that we call in Mecca, for instance, was it really uh, in Mecca or was it originally in Mecca or somewhere else? And that's the topic for today's video. With us here again, joining us remotely, our dear brother Mel. Mel, thank you so much. Great to be back. Um, looking forward to sharing um, the information as regards the, the Masjid al-Haram. Um, it's obviously a really important aspect of Islam. Where did it all start? Um, if we follow the standard Islamic narrative, we're told um, countless times that it all happened in Mecca, in the Hejaz. Um, we're even told that Abraham visited Mecca in the Hejaz thousands of years ago, that it is one of the stations of Abraham. But the funny thing is, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that Abraham traveled so far south. So that has always been a fishy, sketchy point in the narrative. But maybe if we just throw out the sin, the standard Islamic narrative, and just look at the evidence in the Quran itself, and we look at the evidence in the Bible, we discover that actually maybe the Masjid al-Haram was in a different place, and this place would be Jerusalem. And this is called the Jerusalem Thesis. Um, I don't take any credit for this. This is um, principally the work of people like Paul Ellis and, and another guy called Odin Lafontaine, who have championed this um, idea. And there's many other scholars who also hold to this. So, so the claim is the Masjid al-Haram was only ever in Mecca in the Hejaz. And you can see there from the map, it's way down south middle of the uninhabited part of Arabia. Um, and if we look at Surah 2, um, Surah 2 says, turn then thy face towards the Masjid al-Haram, and wherever ye be, turn your faces towards that part. They verily to whom the book hath been given, know this to be the truth from their Lord, and God is not regardless of what you do. So in that uh, First there, you can see that it's saying for Muslims, followers of Islam, to pray or face the, this masjid, wherever that is. It doesn't actually say where it is. Right. On two occasions in the 7th century, Arabs took part in the conquest of Jerusalem, 614 AD, and again under the leadership of Umar in 637 AD. Um, it's my um, argument and Paul Ellis and Odin's argument as well, that the Masjid al-Haram refers to the Temple Mount, which Umar conquered, and more specifically, the Masjid he built himself on that location, where Jews, Christians, and the Saracens believed was associated with Abraham. Now, if we think back to a um, previous episode, we found that Leo III had said that it was his to his knowledge, Umar was one of the people who wrote the Quran with two others. So if that's true, it makes logical sense to suggest that the place where Umar conquered was the place that he was talking about when the text says, turn then thy face towards the Masjid al-Haram. Mm -hmm. um, that makes more logical sense than that Umar was talking about some place in the middle of nowhere, way down in the Hijaz. Um, the obsession in the seventh century, if you look at uh, what the Arabs were doing, was it was all about Jerusalem. They were obsessed with conquering it, holding it, and so on. And not only was, was there one masjid built on the Temple Mount, but there was in fact three built in the same century. This is something that we'll be looking at in the next episode. But that's really significant. We don't hear of any other place being built in the seventh century of any significance. Um, we hear of um, work being done in Mecca in the 8th century, 
Um, but in the, I think it was the 750s, there's a reference to, but, but way back in the seventh century, we don't hear any reference to Mecca in the Hejaz. But what we can, we can definitely point to is the fact that Jerusalem was a major focus for the Arabs at that time. Now, let me just move on. So um, we're going to look at what the Quran says about the Masjid al-Haram and just build up a, a kind of a portrait of this place. Again, we, we take away from our minds all the preconceptions that we have about the Masjid al-Haram and just look at the Quran afresh. Um, so it's referred to as the house. It's referred to as my house. Um, and this, if Umar is writing, and we know that Umar has created a masjid on the Temple Mount, then it would make sense that it's actually Umar talking about the masjid on the Temple Mount. It's referred to the station of Abraham. To my knowledge, there was no station of Abraham mentioned in the Bible way down in the Hejaz. We know what the various stations of Abraham, they included places like Ur, the, uh, also Haran, and then Jerusalem, and also Beersheba, but not Mecca in the Hejaz. So if I was guessing where um, the Masjid al-Haram was, I would certainly look at the various stations in the Bible and pick one of those as a likely candidate. Um, it's also referred to the ancient house. Well, if Mecca didn't exist before the 8th or 9th century, then it's very unlikely that that would fit. It's referred to as the sacred house. It's referred to as a Kaaba or the cube. Right. And I want to point it's something uh, yeah. uh, before, I'm sorry, uh, uh, before I forget it. You know, me and Jay uh, uh, have been releasing a video called In Search of Mecca. And it's very clear from that particular research, and I'm sure uh, you were part of that research, of course, uh, is that Mecca, uh, you cannot make the case that it existed, uh, you know, before the seventh century. Uh, so that uh, aligns with what you're saying here those description must have been applicable to something different. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so lastly here, it was the first house created for mankind at Baca, wherever Baca is. Well, Dan Gibson would argue that Baca is one of the names of Petra, for instance. Yeah. yeah. I have a different theory on that one, but we'll, we'll come to that later. Yeah, and um, I would argue else? that Becca is the name <laughs> of a valley that is north uh, of the uh, Promised yeah. Land also, so. Yeah. Yeah. So what does the Quran say about the Masjid al-Haram? Well, the um, thing I didn't point out is that um, what it actually means, Masjid al-Haram, is the for forbidden place of prostration, which of course is, could be anything really there. Right. Um, another uh, point is when Abraham and Ishmael were raising the foundations of the house. Now, we can think about that. We can think about um, well, first of all, I would suggest that um, Abraham and um, Isaac were known to have gone to Mount Moriah, and Abraham built the um, altar there. So it might it might be that what's happening here is that Isaac is being replaced with Ishmael in order to make a claim that. Um, Islam comes from Abraham and that they are the rightful inheritors of the tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when it talks about raising the foundations of the house, we could be talking about an altar rather than a house specifically. Um, uh, also, Lord, I have settled some of my progeny in a valley without progeny by thy sacred house. Now, it's referring to the progeny of Abraham, which are the Jews. Now, the last time I looked, the Jews were never settled way down in Mecca. They were settled in Israel. So I would argue that this must be in Israel. It makes logical sense. Um, so why are we not noticing this before? Um, it's also pilgrimage or a hajj. Um, do you not shave your heads until the offering reaches the place of sacrifice? No harm in the rituals of Safa and Marwa. And remember when we assign for Abraham the place of the house, ascribe unto, unto me no partners and purify my house for those who circumambulate it 
and those who stand and those who bow and, and prostrate. So that is essentially the, the key elements that the Quran tells us about this location. Now, um, I'm going to suggest that there are a number of reasons, if we use the Bible, why this place is to be identified with Jerusalem. The first reason is a link with Abraham. So if we look to Genesis 22, mm -hmm. it refers to Abraham building an altar on Mount Moriah to sacrifice Isaac upon. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. Now, in Hebrew, we would say it's Mount Moriah, but if we were to say that in Arabic, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it would be called Mount Marwa. That's how you would say it in Arabic. That's the equivalent. So when we talk about Safa and Marwa, we're already seeing a link again with Jerusalem. And Mount Moriah, for those who are not aware, is right smack in the middle of Jerusalem. At least that's the tradition. And, and, and really what matters here is what was the tradition in Judaism, and that is that Mount Moriah was in Jerusalem. Right. Now, in relation to that as well, um, 2 Chronicles 3.1, this is the location where Solomon built the first temple. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. It was on the threshing floor of Arona, the Jezebel, uh, sorry, Jebusite, the place provided by David. So we can see that the temple itself would, would uh, fit with the idea of a sacred house. This was the original sacred house on Mount Moriah. Okay. Um, you can read that there for yourselves. I'm just going to go on to another reason. The Kaaba is a cube. So how does that fit? Well, if we look at uh, the, a reference to the tabernacle, tabernacle in the wilderness, Exodus 28, it says that the Ark of the Covenant was kept in the Holy of Holies, which was a cubic room. God's presence, the Shekinah, was believed to be in there. So if we, for example, take 2 Chronicles 3.3, 3, where Solomon built the first temple, the portico at the front of the temple was 20 cubits long across the width of the building and 20 cubits high. And then if we look at 1 Kings, he prepared the inner sanctuary within the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 wide, and 20 high. He overlaid the inside with pure gold, and he also overlaid the altar of cedar. Now, 20 wide, 20 long, 20 high. What does that sound to you like? Uh, it sounds like a, a cube here. Yeah. So we have here a connection with the, the tabernacle the, that was in the wilderness and its connection with um, uh, Holy of Holies, which was a cube. So again, we're, we're seeing a reason to connect it with Judaism. Um, if we look to reason number three in terms of the Hajj, um, and there are some interesting insights here. If we take Deuteronomy 16, three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. And look at the names of these Jewish festivals. Hag, um, Hakat Zir, Hag Ha Shavuot and Hag ha, uh, Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles. Now, what's interesting is the word Hajj is a direct Arabic borrowing from the Hebrew Hag. In fact, in some Arabic speaking countries, um, including Egypt, they still pronounce it as Hag. So it's directly from Hebrew. Yeah, um, Odin Lafontaine points out that. Um, that, uh, let me see, I've lost where, that's, uh, there's no logical connection to the Arab, Arabic etymology 
HJJ, which is to argue. So it's directly taken from uh, Hebrew, and it is a place of pilgrimage, but it's in the context of a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and that's significant. So all three of these festivals or hags were made by Jews originally to the Temple Mount. So if there's a reference to a hajj or a hag, it, it really emphasizes the idea of Jerusalem. And it's interesting that um, Abdul al-Malik's um, assistant or co-leader co was al-Hajjaj, which actually means someone who goes on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So that's another little pointer to the idea that the Masjid al-Haram was on uh, the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if we take Eid al-Adha, um, it relates to the Exodus 12, the sacrifice of a goat. So again, that's drawn from Judaism. And, oops, sorry. Let's try that again. And then if we look at the Mishnah, it prescribes circling the temple seven times on the seventh day. So this idea of circumambulating the Kaaba, this is actually something that is found in Judaism as well, which uh, talks about circling the temple uh, seven times. Yeah. So another point is the idea that it is the house of God. The Bible refers to the temple frequently as the house of God. Um, you can have a look at the references there. Um, I think that the one that uh, our audience would be most familiar is the one where Jesus said, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Right. So again, house of God fits. Um, now, the fifth reason is the idea of Baca. If we look at Psalm 84, um, Baca, or in particular, the Valley of Baca, is symbolic of pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So it is a poetic way of referring to um, the journey to Jerusalem. So that's more um, evidence. In terms of shaving uh, people's heads, which is was referred to in the Quran earlier, an objection to a Jewish location is that the Jews are not known for shaving their heads as, as Muslims do on Hajj. Okay, however, we find this. There's in Isaiah, it says, in, in that day, the Lord God of hosts called to weeping and mourning, to boneless and putting on sackcloth. So shaving of one's head was associated, even in Judaism, with penance, something that you would do when you, in particular, journeyed to the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. um, number seven is circumambulation. The Dome of the Rock was designed to be circumambulated. And we also find the word uh, hakafa in uh, Hebrew. It's a, a Jewish uh, minhag or tradition in which people walk or dance around a specific object, object, generally in a religious setting. On Sukkot, the reader's platform is circled on each of the seven days of the holiday. And this spot on the Temple Mount is the exact location of the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was once kept. And I should also point out that in the book of Joshua, the Jews walked around the city of Jericho once a day for a week and seven times on the seventh day carrying the Ark of the Covenant. That's right. On, uh, on the seventh day, the people blew the shofar or the ram's horn and shouted, causing the walls to fall, allowing them to enter the city. Now, it's interesting when Muslims go to Mecca, they go around the Kaaba. But how many times? seven times. Is that just a coincidence? I don't think so. I think this is a sign that it comes from the same origin. And it's interesting that Jews circumambulate anti-clockwise as well. That's another coincidence. Um, and they do this in a very particular way. Um, the, in Judaism, starting things from the right side is considered to be important since the right side is the side of uh, Hesed, or kindness, while the left side is the side of gevura or judgment. Mm -hmm. Apologies to any Jewish viewers if I pronounce that word wrong, but I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, so, you know, I think that's pretty solid evidence. Reason number eight 
is what about the Safa and Marwa? And the credit here is to Odin Lafontaine. So if we look at uh, this picture, we see the, Ka the Kaaba in Mecca, and there's a circumambulation done between Marwa and Safa. Okay. Now, we can see, despite being hidden under a building, that they are not hills. These places in Mecca are just rocky outcrops or boulders. Um, Al-Fadi, I believe you've been to Mecca a number of times. Um, did yes. you see any mountains at Safa and Marwa? Oh, times? not at all. It's just a small pieces of rock like this. In fact, this is a new addition when they uh, kind of like protected them now because uh, kids will jump in there and play. And I used to do that too, but it's not a mountain. I mean, I was told that this is the remnant of it, you know? I mean, I didn't think much of it at that time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's interesting that they have this notion that Safa and Marwa were mountains. And yet, when you go there, um, you see that they are just boulders. Um, and it sounds to me very um, fishy, let's say. It sounds to me that there was another location originally, and they've basically taken it and, and moved it to a different location, taking the tradition, tradition but changing the location. Now, if we look at Jerusalem, we have Mount Scopus and Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. Um, there's the Mount of Olives, and here is Mount Moriah, which is Marwa in, in Arabic pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the Temple Mount with the Dome of the Rock. Okay, and here is Mount Scopus. Mount Scopus is actually called Safa, according to um, Flavius Josephus, um, and this goes way back to the the first or second century. So for 2000 years, Mount Scopus has been referred to as Safa. So there we have Marwa and Safa. I would argue, and I think very convincingly, I think, that they just simply took a tradition of um, the pilgrimage to these sites, um, the circumambulation between these two um, mountains. And these are actually mountains, not simply boulders, and they moved it to Mecca. Um, I think the argument there is very strong. Let's see. Now, there's a note from Paul Ellis that the Quran doesn't mention uh, Je uh, Jehu Shabbat, but the adjacent valley of Gehenna occurs in uh, as Jehanan uh, 101 times. So this, if we take a map here, we can see Jehu Shabbat there, and we see. Um, uh, it's very hard to, to see it here from, from my side, but you have Hinnon, which is the same place. So it fits with the Quran itself. Okay, so how is it looking so far? For, forbidden place of prostration. The inner sanctuary was forbidden to Gentiles. Arabs were blocked by Jews in 614 AD. So that fits. Uh, God's house, well, the temple was often called God's house, so that fits. Holy of Holies uh, was cubic, so that fits. Uh, back is symbolic of pilgrimage route to Jerusalem, so that fits as well. The temple was built on Mount Moriah, where Abraham built an altar to sacrifice Isaac. Again, another connection. Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish nation, which fits with the idea of Abraham settled his progeny nearby. And then it also fits with the Hajj. We also see that there's animal sacrifice. Uh, it fits again with the Quran. Circumambulation fits and also Safa and Marwa. Now, unfortunately, the arrows, or the ticks are not showing up, but I think we've proven really that in all cases, all mentions, all descriptions of the Masjid al-Haram in the Quran, we can go and look at the evidence. We can find it in every case it would fit with Jerusalem. So what's the verdict? So my verdict is that the Masjid al-Haram was originally in um, Jerusalem and not in Mecca, as claimed by the standard Islamic narrative. Well, well done, brother. Thank you so much, as always. Uh, next time, I think we are going to talk about the successive masjids on the Temple Mount and uh, look at that claim as well. Uh, until then, Everyone, hope you've been enjoying this series. Until we meet again, have a blessed day.
Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.